Thanks very much, Chris. Uh, good afternoon, Scott. Um, we start with the real sort of happy feel-good news that David Brooks has extended his contract. Just how excited are you to get him back in the pitch soon? And what have you seen? How have you seen him change as a person with all that he's been through? Well, I'm extremely excited to to see him back. We missed him for massive player we missed and the quality we missed last year with with Brooksy and the the situation which he was in. I think first and foremost, absolutely delighted to have him back in terms of general health and him getting over where he is. Um, he's progressed very, very well. Um, it has been slow, of course, and we've had to tread really carefully, but probably over the last couple of weeks, we've pushed on that work and he's come through that work very, very well. So, um, yeah, look, we're getting we're getting closer to the point where hopefully he can he, he can be in a position to to come and help us and join the team really. So um, and like I said, uh, a player of uh, Brooks's quality, Premier League experience and the, and the quality will bring will, will only help us as well. So um, yeah, it's been a long road for him and it's been a in terms of his general demeanour has been you know he's he's missed football first and foremost. Obviously at the start of it, football was probably irrelevant and it was more the fact of of life on in in that sense and getting through the the cancer of which he had really which um and then now obviously now i see someone who can't wait to get back out and he's constantly on me you know when can i when can i train when can i train fully but we're having to tread a bit carefully on that when he does come back it'll be like a new signing for you obviously on, on which note um i know you're not going to give me any names but how many bodies do you need through the door and sarika dembele is, is he on his way out um Oh, we need bodies through the door for sure. Um, we need we need help in in that and um, to to evolve uh, uh, as a team and as a football club. Certainly, that is the case. Again, now we sit in this position. Obviously, days are um, days are, are going by, and that you know it's, it's been pretty tricky for many reasons, for many circumstances. So um, I'm hoping, and we're hoping, everyone's trying to to bring players in. Um, but like I said, there's many obstacles we've got we're facing at this present moment in time. So hopefully, we we can do that regarding players and Suriki, who you mentioned that there may be opportunity that players do leave. Um, certain players will um, from last year who maybe didn't get a lot of minute time and want want to play football. Then there's there's probably um, there's a few in that bracket that you know if they want to go and play football this year, then certainly will be open to, to giving that opportunity really because that may be limited here. Um, yeah, so that, that's where that one is really. Turning our attention to the game itself, uh, doesn't get any easier. This Premier League, Manchester City, Arsenal, now a trip to Anfield. You'll have done your video analysis this week. Is this the most vulnerable Liverpool have perhaps looked for a while? Look, I, I'm not sure about that. The results, obviously, in terms of what Liverpool have aspired to and where they are currently in terms of results, and I'm, I'm sure they'll be the first to, to, to know it's, it's not gone where they wanted it to go. What I do know is you're playing against a, a world-class team, a well-coached team, an exceptional manager, and um, uh, a, a team that are probably going to look for a reaction as well. So this is one of the hardest places to go for Anfield. Um, even probably more so you could look at it in terms of their current situation it could be very difficult but um, as always it's one for us it's a challenge for us to go and face it's one where we need to you know we need to try and get something out of this game we need to go there with a real air about us and you know all the work we've done this week in trying to put that into practice really come off a positive result in in midweek um, but of course I mean, I'll be lying to sit here a team just newly promoted going to Anfield um, the challenges what we faced over the last couple and even Aston Villa I put into that bracket um, have been big ones but um, yeah so this is another one we face. Just one final question for me you obviously have recent experiences recently as 18 months ago of taking a side to Anfield and winning there and I know it wasn't a packed raucous Anfield which maybe makes it different but what do you remember about that day what was your messaging to the players that day that you know OK, this is Anfield, but just don't play the red shirts, just play, yeah, play the field I think field it was football. exactly that. I think it's exactly that. It's a, it's a place that can be very intimidating. We play behind closed doors, so that was probably reduced somewhat. Um, but again, playing against a high-quality team. Um, and along the way, you've got to show quality. You've got to try and assert yourself and cause them problems in, in the areas you can cause them problems. You've got to ride your luck at times. You've got to be defensively very, very good. And... You know, the 11 out there are going to have to put in big performances. And I don't just speak for me as a manager of Bournemouth, a team that's just come up from the league. I probably speak for the majority of managers what go there, bigger, much bigger teams than us. Um, and 
they'll, they'll probably all say the same thing. You're going to a, a, an extremely tough place to go, a team that very rarely lose and have been at the, the top of this division and around in Europe for some time now. So, um, yeah, we're going to have to get everything right. And like I said, we're going to have to be right on it in, in that sense to try and get something out of the game. Hasko, good afternoon. Good to see you. Three games into your Premier League season, how would you assess the team's start of the season so far? Well, we got off to a good start, for sure. Um, you know, at, at, at times during pre-season, it's, be, it's, been, um, it's been tricky. We've worked really hard and the levels of what we've gone up to from where we were last year. Um, like I said, a newly promoted team and the challenges and the, and the levels are, are much more excessive than what they were last year, really. So, And the fixture list of what they've been, of course, Villa at home was not an easy was not an easy start as well. And we managed to get a very good result. And then the fixture system has, has pushed us to Man City away, Arsenal at home, and now Anfield away. So um, look, there's been there's been positives for sure. There's been loads of areas we need to improve and we need to get better. Um, and yeah, that's where we currently are probably. Different competition and very different opposition, but that win against Norwich on Tuesday, what does it do to the confidence levels going to Anfield? Well, it, it, yeah, it helps. Of course, it does. It's a positive result, and I think the way we um, certainly after after Arsenal um, and I was very critical of the side um, in terms of our first half performance, in terms of how we how we turned out in their moments, and I was unhappy with that. And I suppose a big positive coming out of Norwich was uh, it was probably the polar opposite. Of course. Um, a different step down in, in qualities in terms of what we was facing, but still arguably a very good side. Um, but what we did show, we showed in abundance and we put, you know, my message during the week regarding the team and what we need to be. We certainly showed that against Norwich 2-1 down with practically seconds on the clock and we've come back. Large parts of the game really dominated. So there was some, uh, as well as the performance, which was good, the, the general messaging around where we where I was disappointed with us previous days against Arsenal we um we seem to we seem to put that right and what of what type of reaction you expect from Liverpool after their defeat against United well uh, it's it's going to be uh, it's going to be a positive one for sure you know playing in front of their own home stadium a stadium that that is very intense um and always you're playing against an extremely quality side it's a side that have quality all over the pitch and so yeah for sure look this is this is a this is going to be a, an extremely tough game for us, but one as always, like I always say, is one we're looking forward to. Thank you. Hi Scott. Hi. Can I just get a, an injury roll call ahead of the game on Saturday? I've got Dom Slanky, Jimmy Bosas, Ryan Fredericks, and Joe Rothwell, and an update on Jamal now as well. He came off ill. Um, yeah, jo Jamal Jamal fell ill um, literally just before kick off. He, he was back today, first time in training, so had sickness. Um, for the game, he, he came back this morning, so it was his first day training today. We'll see how he comes out of today's training. Um, Injury-wise, uh, Dominic Solanke will will train with us tomorrow, first time full full training. So, hopefully, again, if he comes through that, it can be an option for us at the weekend. The other three players you mentioned, Junior Stanislas, Ryan Fredericks, and Joe Rothwell, still won't make the weekend. They're still they're still. Um, they're still behind in that sense. They're getting very close. Uh, probably Ryan Fredericks is probably the closest. So hopefully, um, you know, he's not too far away. Um, and Junior and Joe, we're just, yeah, we'll see where we are with them. They're still still a bit. I know you, uh, Jamie, mentioned that game at uh, Anfield in March 2021. I don't know if you know this, but that's the last time you're the last Premier League manager to win at Anfield. Talking about, you know, confidence ahead of the game on the weekend, what's the mood in the camp been like ahead of it? Always a positive mood, always a very good mood. Um, probably says the quality we're playing against is a team that don't lose too often, um, certainly at home. And, and uh, it's, um, but yeah, look in general, our mood in terms of where we are as a as a team. While we don't want to lose football matches, of of course, the the levels of where we are and the 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 quality we've played against certainly over the last two games has has been there at times to, for everyone to see really. And we've just come up a little bit short from for one reason or another. Um, but yeah, again, we, this is a challenge which we face and there is no bigger challenge really other than the, the, the top boys, what you go and face in this division. And we've got one of them at, at the weekend and um, yeah, we're looking forward to that. I've got to ask you about that kickoff routine that we did against Fulham last season in that 1-1 draw. In the week we saw Messi and Mbappe combine in a similar move for PSG amongst other teams as well that have done it. Our under-16s did it last weekend as well. 
how does that make you feel when you know you've seen your kickoff routine with the team's kickoff routine being replicated in so many different divisions, especially by some of the best players in the yeah, world? Yeah, I've, I've not. I've, I've seen a couple. I see the one in the week. To be fair, um, yeah. I, as always, go through every game with the finest of detail. Um, and you know, on on the day that one worked, we we tried them routines for practically all games, um, depending on what how we see things and how we see the opposition, where we can exploit the opposition in terms of, you know, it's not just always trying to look to score, it's trying to get an opening in some way or another. Um, so yeah, these are the the details which we try and go through, give them to the players and try and execute in that way. Really, it's a set play opportunity. It's a, either a restart of the game, obviously. Um, so it's an opportunity for us to try and find an opening in that moment, like we do with every phase of play, in every given moment. This is just a, yeah, this is just an area we try and we try and exploit really. Um, and like I said, that one worked, and we've had other ones what nearly work. Um, players executed it to a T on on the day, and and obviously, like you said, I see that a lot of teams are are using that now, and um, it's, yeah, it seems to be working. And just finally, um, obviously the game's not for a couple of months, but after a long trip to Norwich, you must be very relieved to see a home during the next round of the cup. Yeah, definitely. It was a long trip for us, obviously, to Norwich. Um, a, a long day um, for us. So, yeah, please, first and foremost, to have a home tie here in front of our home supporters. Um, and then, obviously, yeah, a tough opposition in in another Premier League uh, club in Everton, but we're looking forward to that. It's still some time away, so we'll focus on that nearer the time. But certainly it's a competition, like always, gives an opportunity to, to, to players as well. So, And like I said, I was really pleased with the performance, the general performance of players that have come in and our general performance overall, really. So hopefully this is another opportunity for us to do that. Hi, Scott. How are you? Good, yeah, good. I remember you scoring a, a fabulous goal at Upton Park for West Ham against Liverpool. And in general, players do, well, you raise your game all the time, but players do raise their game and can achieve the excellence against the top teams. Is that what you're looking for from your players this weekend, to sort of raise themselves up rather than be frightened about yeah, the challenge ahead? Yeah, a million percent. It's exactly that, really. This is... These are the games that certainly I was as a player and even now sitting here as a coach, these are the ones you thrive off really. You're going up for, you know, in boxing terms, pound for pound, they're, they're elite in everything they do. And you need to adopt an attitude which is you want to go and try and challenge that. You want to relish that opportunity and try and get the better of of that rather than the opposite really. And I think that's probably the main message. That was certainly the main message up before when we've been to Anfield. It was my message or certainly the way I fought about playing against these these big players and these big teams. It was one I embraced and one that I look forward to, really. So, um, yeah, um, I need to give that message to the team, really. And, you know, these players, which is very new to some of them, new the Premier League, Anfield, Man City away, these are all um, big challenges, but ones they need to embrace and look forward to. The other option is it, you find it very daunting, you find it very difficult um, and... That's that's not that's the polar opposite to what I want really. Um, so yeah, we need to cliche. We need to enjoy it. Of course we do, but we need to enjoy it in a real positive way. We need to establish ourselves. We need to show our qualities for sure. And while they they may be limited, and while they may be very difficult, um, it's certainly something we need to embrace in that sense. Last week, the second half was much better than the first. I don't think there were any shots on goal or touches in the opposition box in the first half. What did you say at half-time and, and would you like your team to be more gung-ho but with responsibility, i.e. to really ask questions of a team, even if it means you lose games more? Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, look, f first half uh, the, against Arsenal was really poor um, for many reasons. One being the quality we was up against was up extreme quality and you see that in certain moments, the first goal, Jesus, um, and the quality that that can happen in the Premier League. I think probably what disappointed me most was we, you know, we just accepted that really. We just looked like a team that was just was waiting for, yeah, for for what happened to us really, and that's what disappointed me. I thought our general demeanour um, uh, uh, around it was was pretty poor. Half time, of course, there was tactical things we changed, which no doubt helped us a little bit in terms of getting a bit more pressure on. But the general message was exactly what I said, and the, 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 or what I'm saying now, and that general message is. Uh, you know, like you're, you're articulating, or certainly what you're, what you're saying there is, we need, we need to come with some, some sort of uh, effort, endeavour, understand the situations, but we need to try and impose ourselves at times. And I know that's difficult. You're playing against huge quality, and how quickly that can um, be a, 
a psychological dent on someone in the terms of the real control that some teams may have and how quickly that 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 effect can have on body language effect it can have on general momentum of a team is is certainly the case and that, that is going to be it but we need to embrace that we need to quickly recognize what it may look like how it's going to feel in certain moments but we have to we, there has to be a given for us that that we we missed in this in in the first half we had that in the second half for sure they look they had some big chances in the second half they big chances what they missed the game could have gone in another direction for them but certainly what we did have and what the fans want to see and what we need to be as a team is exactly what you're expressing there is a an endeavour about us a front foot way of playing a threat on on the opposition trying to impose ourselves and trying to cause them as many stresses as we can and we did we did we did have that and that was a mindset that was probably half time coming and me explaining to the team in under certain terms what exactly we need to be as well as my job and the staff's job is is the tactical element of of, of making that easier for them as well you mentioned David Brooks earlier. Um, are you ruling out any possibility of the World Cup for him? No, 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 definitely not. Um, look, he's heading certainly in the right direction. Um, I'm always very weary around uh, Brooksy in terms of giving some real defined dates on exactly um, when he may be coming back. But certainly he's definitely heading in the right direction. He's done the most amount of work now uh, over the last 10 days and he's come through that very, very well. Um, so yeah, I'd like to think that in the coming weeks we'll, we'll be in a position where I can say to you, you know, what we're we're at that point now where we can start seeing him in around match day squads and, and and being at a level of fitness that we feels adequate enough to go and operate in the Premier League really, and certainly he's heading that in that direction. So that's pleasing. And the final one from me, David Moyes yesterday seemed to indicate when talking about transfers because his latest transfer target is another foreign player that maybe there aren't that many. Um, really good young English players around, even in, in the lower leagues. And I remember when you were at Charlton, and everyone was talking about you, but there was, there was still a lot of good young players, apart from yourself, that, that were being transferred. Is that what you're finding as a manager, that, that maybe the, the, the pool of English talent is getting less and less? I'm not sure whether it's getting less and less. It's difficult. It's difficult in the English market. Um, the English market has always been that. It's, there's always more inflated prices in, in that market as well, for sure. Um, I don't know whether there's less talent. I'm not sure. I don't know whether the bigger clubs or, or are holding on to players more. Um, but yeah, in, in general, for us, it's, it's difficult full stop, whether it's English or whatever it is at this present moment in time, it's, it, it's pretty difficult. Um, and yeah, we're doing all we can, you know, Transfer markets are never easy, of course they're not. Um, and the biggest challenges you face is that you want players that the other teams don't want to don't let go, the, the challenges of fees and stuff like that. And then obviously added to that, for us, a, a newly promoted team, there's other obstacles which are, which are challenging as well, really. So, yeah, hopefully we can, we can try and move and get some things done, um, but only time will tell, really.